Young Javier and Lucy were smitten when they set sight of each other at a youth retreat in 1985. Javier was the singer and guitarist of the music ministry. Lucy gave her personal witness. Javier and Lucy fell in love. This love led to the profession of their marriage vows. Three beautiful children became the fruits of their love. But Javier and Lucy drifted apart. This ended in divorce. Ten years went by, God brought them back together, reignited the flame of love, used their brokenness to heal others. Find out more about Javier and Lucy's moving story on forgiveness. So when we did get married, we had a great group of friends that we ministered together in this youth group. It was ideal, I think. It's like what everyone hopes for. Be together, and we both are believers, and everything will be fine, and it was. For a while, we continued to minister. And we start having children. Kids come, but it makes it harder. The struggle becomes real. You, with My your ministry, ministry, with music, you um, took care of um, our, our kids, and you s basically stayed home. And I know you remember this well. I, I would say, like, I don't have a life because it's diapers and bottles and dirty clothes and... A little bit frustrated because I was not getting the support. I needed you in a lot of areas, spiritually and emotionally. In a way, I started basically doing things by myself and on my own. We basically started going our separate ways. During that time, just the day-to-day -day, um, losing focus of what God had called us to do, and we kind of put God to the side and said, I think this is what I need to do. And you were saying, well, I think this is what I need to do. and. Also, we were trying to fill the void that only God can fill in our lives. I was expecting you to fill it, and you were expecting me to fill it, when he's the only one that can truly fill it. Something that we hold against each other because no one can take that place. That's his place. And instead of turning back to him, we turned away from each other, and we started almost to resent each other. And part of the love that brought us together we couldn't find it in the right places or show it or ask for God to come back in. Um, it kind of separated us, our, your ministry and, my, and our home tearing us apart. Well, looking back, now I see that um, the lack of not having a, a spiritual director for both of us, I think that was part of our mistake. Me and my ministry, and like at certain point that traveling to different countries, there was nobody there to tell me like, you need to slow down, you need to take care of this, you need to do this, you need to do that. Basically given all this um, spiritual energy through my music and everything, but I was just given and not really taken. With the lack of that, I think that um, I started doing things not necessarily being guided by the Holy Spirit. And at that point, I, at work, I started um, spending more time with a co-worker. And that went into an attraction, and then into physical attraction. So that's when I, even myself knowing that I was doing wrong, then then after that to try to get a, away from that situation, I moved to a different company. This other, um, the job I I met someone else. Then by that time, we had um, Andy. 
and um, I was having this affair. Many times, I obviously, I would deny it, but uh, that, that I finally confessed to you that yes, I was having this affair. I didn't know what to do. You got the advice of asking me to move out. You know, after 10 years of being married to someone who was my only boyfriend, my only love, I felt shattered. Shattered and uh, like I wouldn't be able to go on. But in my heart, that love was still there. I had to struggle with that because I felt something was wrong with me for wanting to keep my family together. And so even though I asked you to leave, um, I couldn't imagine not having a husband and not having a parent to my children. So all the advice I got was to just leave you. I finally decided to even go through with the legal divorce. After I left, um, I actually got worse of the situation, hanging with my cousins and friends that they were not a good influence, just drinking and even at, at times doing drugs. And the they, other you thing, felt like you had no one to go to? Exactly, I, I felt like helpless. But at the same time, I remember the songs that I wrote that they were speaking to me. I was not listening to God. I was not letting nobody to guide me or I, I didn't want to accept the help. Four years passed that I was finally coming to my senses and I remember that my, my, when my sister invited me to this retreat and I went. Even from before the affair happened, that was the hardest thing for both of us because we were people of God and we right. served and we had ministries and we couldn't tell anybody what we were struggling with. You know, we couldn't say that we were hurting. We couldn't say that, you know, sometimes we didn't like each other. That we, we needed help. That we needed help. All our friends that had been a part of our life, I remember like speaking to one of them from Guatemala and, and like hoping that they would say, yeah, Javier's a bad guy and he was wrong and he, you know, you should do this and that. And those, of all the advice, that's the one that I always remember. He's, Lucy, you just need to trust in God. Don't look at Javier, don't look at if he gives you the money, if he doesn't, if he picks up the kids, or if he doesn't, if he's late on the weekend or he's not you trust in God. And that's what I started to do. And that's when God started healing my heart. When he said, I am your everything. Remember how much I love you. Remember that I will never leave you alone. I, again, I wasn't looking for you to fill the spot that belongs to him. And he began to work in me. And at that time is when you said you started going back um, to church and turning away from some of the things that you were doing. In my mind, I played with the idea of finding someone and married. I remember talking to a priest. He, he's, he, you know, he said, "Well, you can, if you want to, just go with the process of um, annulment. Annulment. Then, do you can do that if you want. I mean, you, 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 you also have the right to." be with someone, be happy. But at the same time, it was like, down deep in my heart, I knew that God wanted me to be here. Then I just basically went cold again. And, and, and I remember that that night that I looked at myself alone in that room and, and, and I remember the prayer that I said, Lord, 
If you want me to go back home, put love in my heart for Lucy. Obviously, he listened to my prayer because, you know, I started um, having having those feelings again, and we started talking again, and and God w works in mysterious ways. You know what? I'm okay by myself. I don't need Javier, and I don't need another man. I have my children, and I have my Lord, which I had reconnected. I'm gonna be okay as long as I'm with him. And it's almost as if he was just waiting for me to say, I do depend on you 100%, because at that time, our youngest, Andy, um, who we had already gone through the whole process of we don't need, we want dad, we want dad, and they were all okay. And then Andy starts, well, I want daddy to come at, to my games. Why doesn't daddy come to my games? All the other dads are there. And I was like, look, dude, you are not gonna start with this. We've been through it, we, we're we settled, we're okay, I'm okay, you're okay, we're all okay. We don't need dad. And he was just insistent on that. So that's when I said, you know, maybe you working on the project with the boys, um, and so that's when you came. But I noticed something in you that I hadn't seen even when you were here with them, living in the house as their father, was just um, wanting to be with them, maybe because you didn't realize what you had until you had lost it. And so you wanted to be with them, you wanted to show them things, you were somewhat patient. I noticed a change in you um, that I wanted to see. But screaming loud noises of the world saying, don't do it. Nobody does it. You, 10 years have gone by. It's not gonna work. What if he does it again? What if it fails? Just all those voices of the world were blocking out desires of my heart, which is what God said too, I know the desires of your heart. And it was to be with you till death do us part, serving him as a family. But I kind of opened up the possibility that that might happen and you were here and, you know, when you worked late, what would Andy say? <laughs> Can you sleep over? Can dad stay? F well, first it started with dinner. I'm like, ah, okay, fine. At this table, we, you stayed for dinner and then like I said, just the interactions was just a different person than when you had been, even when we were married. It was like an incubator for a marriage that was dead or marriages that are dying. And it just isolated us from all the viruses of the world that say your marriage can't work. It was not healthy for us to be together based on your not wanting to let go of some things and my anger. But sometimes, you know, and lots of times, we just need to look at it through God's eyes and the marriage, the matrimony, the sacrament. And that's what that allowed for us to do. Say, so like, shut out the noise and the fear of what are people gonna think or how are they gonna judge you and focus on what God wants you to do and how he wants you to do it. Um, I think now, looking back, I hadn't totally forgiven you even at that point, but I was at least willing, willing to forgive you. You know what, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try to forgive. If not, you know, for my relationship with the person, for my relationship with God and everybody else around me, my kids or whoever else might be affected by the poison that not forgiving, you know, starts to fill your heart, and we don't want to have that. The kids, do you remember what you asked them? I asked them at here at this table, table <laughs> that if they uh, will accept me back. Mm -hmm. And they say yes, and... Well... You know, <laughs> 
It's just a, a blessing that God allowed us to go through all of that and and back and be able to sit here at this table again and and say that we conquered. He conquered. He conquered. We were victorious with, through the help of God because His plan is perfect. Hopefully, as we continue sharing our story and the people that we've been able to help, um, God continues using us, either music or through preaching. que nos proteges y que abras nuestros oídos, Señor. Nos hablaron de él. We still hurt. We still hurt each other, but we are making a conscious effort. We have continued to go to couples retreats because we live in this world and there's a yes, healing process and the enemy is not happy that we are going to give people hope through our life experience. So there's a lot of temptation, there's a lot of um, situations that can easily break any marriage. Fill ourselves with daily mass, daily prayer, the sacraments, and just allowing God to fill every area of our life and sharing, sharing when we're feeling broken, not only with each other, but with people in our prayer group, with people in our church so that we don't hide behind the lie or the mask or the fakeness. Cuando volví a mi padre después de haber vivido hundido en el pecado lleno de llanto me temblaban mientras yo me acercaba pues tenía mucho miedo me fuera a If you have good news, we expect you to want to share it. Salvation in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who for love of us and for our salvation came down from heaven. Salvation in His name, and He is the only Savior, is what we are on earth for. Therefore, all those who spread the good news of salvation in Jesus Christ, we should encourage them. I can speak, but how many people can I reach alone? But the media, the television people, the radio, the newspapers, and all those who use the computer and its derivatives in various ways to spread the gospel. We must thank them. We must encourage them. We must work with them so that they can continue to spread the good news. There is so much news that is not so wonderful in the world, but there is also news that is wonderful on the gospel of Jesus Christ. We encourage them and beg God to bless them especially the Shalom World TV. God bless you. Shalom World, God's own channel.